Am I on? Ah oh, yes, I am. Welcome, children of Hearn. First of all, I want to thank all those that have sent me healing. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't going through the best of times, I guess. I've gone through a lot of pain. <coughs> but, go to the territory. Ah, yes. I never foresaw this when I was a young man. Okay. A lot of you must understand the real secrets of the runes. Tolkien talks, uh, talks about it. There are many books wrote about it. But no one really tells you. Oh yes, it's a divination. You must do this ritual at a certain time. You must use this tree. You must... A load of bunkum! The runes were given to man in its own language, in runic, to explain the energies that can be used. Combinations of these runes unlock certain energies that are available to you. Certain bind runes, with the right meditations on those runes, unlock massive powers. This is called rune magic. This is what they were designed for. They were not designed for telling the future. As I explained to you before, you can't really tell a man's future. You can only tell it, you can tell his destiny. That's things in his life that cannot be changed. But you cannot really tell his future because you might change paths halfway through. And we've come across this time and time again. If a person is on that path, like if I do a rune reading or even a card reading for Dark Raven one, I know that it's going to be fairly accurate. Why? Because she's on the set, the set path. I'll give you an example. A person gave Dark Raven one a reading. Well, after reading it, if I would have committed going, hung myself. It was deplorable. Everything was inaccurate. Even the very essence of the reading itself was inaccurate. And this man will then, he gave it to her for free, but he would charge astronomical amounts of money for these readings that are a load of bunkum because he's trying to read a future that he has no basis of a past. You have to have a basis of a past before you can link up with a future. Like you say, oh this has happened to me in the past, that's happened to me in the past. It's happened for a reason. And the reason is to make you stronger, more resilient. So you can cope with the now. Now is all you have. Start making plans for tomorrow. Tomorrow does not come. It doesn't exist. Yesterday is gone. It's only a reference point. It's gone. Finished with. This very moment, as you're listening to me, is all you have. There was a video that was put on. Uh, not a video, it's something I was watching and it made great sense. A person in there is in... I don't know, he's in a state of poverty. And suddenly 
he wins a massive amount of money. Now, this money seems to preoccupy him. His whole life has suddenly changed. His thought processes have changed. He's no longer interested in spiritual things. He wants to know what he can get. But that's great. Thief comes along and takes his money. He loses the bloody lot. He's now back to square one. What has he learnt? And he gets in depression because his money's gone. He gets sad. Now, when he had this money, he had bigger problems. Now, some of you say, oh, I wish I could win the lotto. Oh, I could go with about 10 grand. You are digging a hole for yourself. If you want 10 grand, you'd have to have a bodyguard to watch over your children, take them to school, bring them back. You'd have to have maximum security around your house. You'd have to be on guard of your home. 24-7, in case someone's going to rob you. Or kidnap your children. Yeah, or your children kidnapped. Or your animals stolen and kidnapped. Or your wife. You've got to have like a, a little army of bodyguards following you around all over the place. You'd have to change your car probably and have, it, have an, a bulletproof car. In some, in some lands. So it's got all these new precepts that have come in because you wanted 10 or 20 that million. Now you're in trouble. Not only that, you ha you'll have a wealth of sackfuls of begging letters. You'll have friends that you never even dreamt you had. It, you'll be pestered day and night. You won't be able to go out to your home without someone with a camera or following you. Is this what you really want? The 18 grand, yeah. Is that what you really want? You have just dug a big hole for yourself. But when it goes, you've got nothing. But you've got one thing. You have yourself in this body. This is the real essence. You have this. And that really is what matters. Is no one going to be banging on your door trying to hunt you down or kidnap your children or your animals? There's no one going to pester you for money because you haven't got any. You have enough to live on, to keep the welfare of this body functioning. That's all you need. Are you going to suddenly be able to take it with you? We had a person once came to us and said, Well, if I can't take all my cats with me, I'm not going to ascend, I'm not going. This is a mentality of an idiot. You're only here for a length of time. A rose blooms in your garden. It withers and it dies to bloom again. This should tell you there is no nothing on this earth more precious than spirit, or the life force, or the real you. You have life. Rejoice in the fact that you are living. How many times in the rain or in a bad day they turned around and said, oh, what a terrible day. Of course it's not a terrible day, folks. It's a lovely day. You're alive. Oh, I have this pain. Oh, it's a terrible day. Rubbish. 
The pain will remind you you're alive. The water cleanses the spirit from the skies. And believe you me, we live in Ireland, we care enough of it. The sun that you bask in make you feel the warmth of the world. These are the precious things. I, for instance, I have a rose tree in my garden, or in our garden, and we have flowers in our garden. We will not cut them. We will not cut them and take them indoors. Why? Because we're killing the flower. I'd rather see it growing naturally and blooming naturally in the garden than see it wither and die in a vase in the front room. This is, this is me of course, I mean, <laughs> I'm allowed to be eccentric at my age. So, we learn. The most precious thing you have is not money. It's nice to have a certain amount, yes, to be able to do those little things that we couldn't do before. But it's not necessary to have volumes of it. The, show me a pop star, a film actor, who's got billions. Show me what kind of life have they got. Can they go shopping down the mall on a Friday night and meet their friends? No, they can't. Why? Because you get thousands of bloody people with cameras clicking. Cameras in your face wherever you go. Cameras piercing through your windows. This is the life of the wealthy. And I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't want to live that way. I'm happy the way I am. I have so many friends that I meet, and that I love, and I, I feel for. Even in the animal kingdom. It's a thing of beauty. This is priceless. So before you think about the tragedy of losing that job, or losing that amount of money, this could be an invaluable asset. This could be an invaluable turning point in your life. Because you say, wow, I've lost my job. Hmm, what am I going to do? What you're going to do, indeed, is retrain and do what the masters and your guides want you to do. Not what you want to do, but what they want to do with you. So you develop. Some of you have come to Dark Ravenwood and said, well, we can't, I can't astral project, I can't do this. And we have proven this completely wrong and in error. Especially those who are in the Order of the Dragon, because they say, they'll find they can. Miracles have, have achieved. They have learnt the most valuable thing in life. Fourteen minutes have passed, then. Okay. So I leave you with these thoughts before you fill in your next lotto ticket or do in your next football pools or go down to the betting office. Think of what I've said. Namaste. I'm shanty.